Hello YouTube. Welcome to my first painting update for my new channel. I actually filmed this before but I filmed it on a cell phone and I forgot that you need to have your cell phone orientated horizontally in order to have the widescreen capture so it didn't work so I actually bust out my real vlogging camera. I actually have a legit vlogging camera that has like a reversible screen, an LED reversible screen so you can uh, watch your filming and you know when it films in 1080p and all that good stuff. Um, so I bust it out so hopefully the quality on this should be a lot higher and I kind of jerry-rigged a tripod. My actual little sm small tripod won't even fit on my painting desk because there's not enough room for it. So I rigged up some blue tack and a scotch glass to kind of make do with until I find a better solution. Um, but anyways, painting update. Well, what I got on the table right now, see if I can uh, actually get everything more into, into frame there. Um, this is what's on the painting desk right now, is I got my Blitzkrieg Germans. Now this is a uh, pretty big, pretty ambitious project. I uh, have been working on for over a year now. Um, let's see there, one of these guys here. Um, I got 30 of them done plus several vehicles and weapon teams. I have a 105 howitzer. No, there they are. See there, I did, uh, I painted the correct Rothenfarb their shoulder boards with the artillery red. Um, I painted in the National Eagle, um, their collar insignia, the Reich's Adler decals on their helmets. Pretty much, I min-maxed my level of painting on these guys. Um, you know, I used the foundry, I didn't use the foundry paints, but I used the triad paint system of a super dark base layer, a medium, and then you know build up progressive layers of uh, varying shades of the same color on top of it. That's how all these guys were done. This is actually the Warlord metal kit, and these are honestly of all of the Warlord figures I have painted, plastic and metal. These were probably the best. The sculpts on them were really good, and they painted up really well. They had a lot of good raised detail. Um, so yeah, so I got this painted. I made one snafu. I don't know if you can catch that, but uh, actually have the legs on the on the uh, artillery piece here the the leg trails backwards so you can tell i painted the tools right here yeah there's the tools they're supposed to be facing outward small little safu i didn't recognize it until i was uh doing the weathering on it so i was like at that point i'm like all right this thing's already based it's already painted like we're just rolling with it so i got that i got 30 infantry and a couple weapon teams painted up. They just need to finish a basing. And then on top of that, I have a SDKFZ-222 for Warlord, the resin one, and a Stug-3 Aus-D that are also painted, completely done, varnished, all that. I'll just show the Stug 3. Um, I actually did, I used the uh, AK Panzer Gray modulation set. It's like a seven paint set or six paint set and it has like a base, a light, it has like a dark base, a light base, um, or it has a shadow, a dark base, a light base, and a highlight. And then, you know, you just highlight, you know, you do the shadows and the shadows and then you do the highlight on the raised areas and the panels and then it's been varnished. And then I did really light weathering, just just a light wash on it. Um, I, you know, this is gonna be mainly for the French campaign and I can use it for Barbarossa. So I didn't wanna go too crazy with the weathering on it. So these guys that are here, these are the guys that I gotta finish putting the, uh, the Reichs Adlers on their helmets. 
and then base uh, finish the basing on them and then they'll be complete um, this is about 30 percent done of the project so this project is going to be like my master world war ii my opus this is my opus right here my goal is is to have a company of infantry a platoon of scout cars it's going to be a and this is all going to be very historical based so i'm going to have a detachment of uh, a platoon of or a section of scout cars which would be a three three team a two two three and two 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 twos um and that'll be that and then i'll have a I want to do a platoon of Panzer threes, and I want to have some associated support weapons. I want to have a Flak 36 ground roll, um, or I should say uh, an army Flak 36, so um, not a static Luftwaffe or Luftwaffe Flak division Flak gun, but an army level, divisional level gun um, with half track. I want to have the LEFH. 18 105 howitzer with truck i want to have a weapons platoon from the heavy company so that's going to be three or four um heavy well in the heavy roll um in bolt action they're classified as a medium machine gun but uh with the lafayette mount so three or four machine gun teams plus two eight centimeter mortars um and then a company of infantry i only have about I only have probably about 20 of the infantry painted up because I took, I bought the early war pioneer platoon box set from Warlord, which contained 30 figures of which I think 12 of them I painted up for a pioneer squad, which will probably become a Panzer pioneer squad with a 251 half track Hanno mag, um, you know, with the pontoon bridge or with the little spanner bridge on top of it, the uh, the the pioneer variant of the Panzer Panzer Spa wagon, wagon I should say. Um, so I need to get probably two more boxes of infantry for these guys. Um, I'm going to order tomorrow a box of 25 plastic warlord infantry for these guys, and that's what the most of these guys are. Some of them are from their metal command group because I also bought the metal command group with this guy. He's the fires officer, um, the company fires officer, or whatever the German equivalent of that is. In America, we call them fizzos, fire officers. Um, and then this guy with the Reuters Kreutz painted him up. He's probably going to be like my company commander. Um, and then just some guys that I need to put some Reich Adlers on. And then like here, these guys, I'm going to do a separate video on these guys and their brothers, but... These are, the. F this is a five centimeter mortar team. So there would have been two of these five centimeter mortar teams at the company level uh, for a first wave division, 1940-41 in the German army. You know, things changed and di different divisions were equipped slightly different in that time period. But generally speaking, this is going to represent a first wave division, 1940-41, um, probably a uh, Panzer Grenadier company. And... So they would have had two of these. Warlord only sells them in individuals, and it's like six USD for, or six or eight USD for one team. So you're looking at like, you know, 15, 16 bucks for two teams. And these guys are Crusader, and I got them for like 10 bucks for two teams, or like eight bucks, something like that. It was, it was a good price, and honestly, the quality is definitely there. But I bought uh, five or six blister packs from uh, Crusader, four of which were World War II German stuff. So I'm probably gonna do a review video after this one uh, to kind of show off those, because there's not a lot on them online. I know they're very popular and they're highly regarded, but there's not a lot of videos actually showing the miniatures and comparing them to like Warlord medals or um, artisan medals, right? So I'm gonna do that, um, but this is actually my long-term ongoing project that I've been working on for over a year, honestly, probably closer to two years, over 18 months at this point. Um, and you know, I still, I'm not even 50% done with it. But what I've really been working on since the outbreak of the Wu-Tang flu, as it's colloquially known here in the States, um, has been a giant Republican Roman army. 
Um, as it sits right now, I think it's at 132 infantry, all Vitrix, and 14 cavalry, and the cavalry are from Gripping Beast. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the camera and put it into handheld mode here. Ah, so up here is the Romans, and we can get a little close up on them. So I've been working on these guys for exactly a month. And what we got here, that's my unit of Levies right there with the small round shield and the javelins. Um, behind them we have the chain mail Principes with the Pelum. Um, these guys are 100% done, ready for basing. These are Triarii and the bronze armors with the bronze muscle cuirass. These guys are being based. These are a unit of 12 slingers. These are the Vitrix Balearic slingers, but I plan on using them, since they're Balearic slingers, I can use them for Republican Roman armies from the times of the Carthaginian Wars, and then all the way up to the Imperial armies. I mean, I, I mean, there's, I know like in the second century AD, there were still reports of Balearic sling, slingers being used in Roman armies. So, I mean, these guys are gonna be able to be used for five, 600 years worth of games right there, and then I can use them for Carthaginians. And I think I could actually get away using them um, as Greek slingers too, or Rhodian slingers, because there's really nothing to differentiate them on. I mean, they got a little bit of red, they, you know, I mean, that, that's it. I mean, I, I painted them all with dark brown and black hair, but you know, I mean, you can really use those for anything. And then this long line here, the back row, some of them got knocked over, are the Hastati, and then the front rank are the Principes in the bronze armors. So the Hastati have either no pectoral armor or they have just a single disc. So they don't have the triple disc, they don't have a muscle cuirass, either they have a single disc pectoral or no body armor. Um, and then all the Principes, they are mostly in the triple disc variety. There's a couple different varieties. And then they also have like uh, the Vitrix sets are really cool and historically accurate in the fact that they also have some of the small muscled pectorals. So they're not a full on muscle cuirass, what you saw a lot in archaic and classical Greece, but they're like, they're, uh, they're essentially like the size of a modern US sappy plate, only meant to cover your vitals from the navel to your clavicle. They don't cover everything, but they're still in the muscle, they have the muscul musculature um, sculpting in them. So, and some of my uh, Principes have those as well. And then we have another unit of Akinci, uh, 16, I think, are right there. Uh, and yeah, these guys are just straight up javelins. I plan on using them for whatever. These are gonna be used with Greek armies, Carthaginian armies, Italian armies, I mean, you name it, they're just javelin men. And that's why I put a few different colors in there. If I was going strictly Roman, they'd probably just be, um, the dyed white linen and the natural brown linen colors, but I went ahead and put a few red and blue guys in there just to give them some variety as some of the other cultures probably would have had different colors on their slingers or if they're mercenary uh, javelin men rather, not slingers. And then over here, these are the last guys that um, I got to show and then these are the rest of the uh, triarii. These are the triarii in the male and then commands. Um, I, I have enough figures, I haven't put them together yet to do one more command, so what I'm thinking here is Triarii command, Principe command, and then Hastati command. So I'll have a four-man command unit for each of the type of citizen levy that there was in the Roman Camillan uh, system. So, and then over here I got the horses. I just primed these guys today. So these are 14 horses. These all come from the Gripping Beast uh, Italian Ally Cavalry line. They had a, an old line and a new line. I had two packs of the new and two packs of the old. And then those are actually all of the uh, all of the uh, the riders, the horsemen that go with them. Um, giant group of horsemen there. Um, I did do a video on them reviewing the Gripping Beast Metal Cavalry. Uh, I don't know if I'm actually going to post it because I did it on my cell phone. And, you know, it screwed up the uh, the view 
or the, the screen, you know, the screen width of the video. So I don't know, there's like, when I tried researching Gripping Beast metal figures, there's like nothing on the internet and nothing for their ancient line. So I feel like I should con contribute to the community by uploading it anyways. And you know, if you really care and are really interested in Gripping Beast metal figures, especially their ancient line, because you know, they do a lot of medieval and dark age stuff too, then maybe, you know, you'll want to watch the video, maybe not. I don't know, I'm not doing this to make money or get ad revenue or any of that stupid shit. This is just for me to give back to the hobby because there's a lot of great channels out there that I watch. Um, and, you know, with the situation going on and everybody being stuck at home, I'm going bored, I'm getting a lot of painting done, and I kind of want to show off my work, keep me motivated, and, and then, like I said, contribute to the greater community by showing off some product reviews or showing how I paint things. Um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Uh, I'm probably gonna start doing a update video once a month. Um, you know, it's the middle of April right now. Um, and then I'll probably do some like, I'll probably do some sit and paint, paint and chat videos um, where I just paint some miniatures and shoot the shit about the hobby. Uh, and maybe other non-miniature related topics uh, and then product reviews. So, you know, I'll do a painting update once a month. I'll do some painting videos of me just sitting here painting at the old desk and then maybe some product reviews because I do got a lot of uh, product coming in. Uh, been, the hobby's been ramping up for me. I've recently just made a friend uh, and he's on YouTube. So... Uh, probably I'd definitely give him some shout, shout outs because uh, he's the one that's allowing me to play with all my toys because before that I didn't really have anybody um, but yeah and then the Romans uh, probably next month I'm probably going to place a 150 US dollar order with Aventine to finish out the army which will be around another 100 more miniatures because I got to get 24 more Hestade I want to get some Italian allies um, some more Principes. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much, oh, and I wanted to get some Magna Graecia hoplites too, that I could use for Italian allies, opposition, I could use them as mercenaries for Carthaginian armies. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, possibilities there. So, and that's my whole goal with this army is, uh, versatility with the Roman army, because... How I have them set up, I feel like I can use them from the early Camillan reforms because everyone's going to have a oval scutum and then all my allies are going to have hoplons or aspices, I should say. And uh, so my goal is to be able to use them from all the way to, you know, the Camillan reforms, um, you know, the Battle of the Caudine Forks, that's kind of when they started to reform their military, all the way up into the Caesarean, Marian, Caesarean era. Because all of my Principes and Chainmails with the round scutum, I feel like I can use those guys all the way up until the Caesarean era. I mean, I feel like I could even use them going into the first century AD. Obviously, that's when you start to see the square scutum um the rectangular screw to scutum rather but i feel like the round the oval scutum can be used you know definitely into uh into the principate area era with augustus that's when things were starting to change so that's my goal and i can always plus them up you know the guys with the older um oscan style disc uh pectorals won't be used but you know the guys with the chain mails can and maybe some of the guys with the muscled cuirasses can be used so i can always um just add some more units you know i get another 32 man unit of legionaries with chain chain armor chain mail and pedalum and then there you go those are caesarean legionaries or marian legionaries or they can be principes if we're talking you know the carthaginian wars the punic wars so that's kind of my goals with that um 
So yeah, so that's April's painting update. Uh, look forward to hearing any comments. My goal is, is to respond to any and everyone's comments and if you leave them, if you know you take the time to ask a question, then I will answer it. So thank you for watching and keep on painting and good luck to everybody and don't go too crazy being stuck in the house with the wife and the kids or the cat, whatever you got in your life. So 